Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Tata Consumer Products Limited Q4 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Anirudha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Aman. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q4 FI23 results conference call of Tata Consumer Products Limited. Now I hand over the call to Ms. Nidhi Verma, Head of Investor Relations and Corporate Communication to take it forward. Thanks and over to you, Nidhi. Thanks, thanks Anirudh and hi and welcome everyone to the Q4 FY23 call of Tata Consumer. I'm joined here by Mr. Sunil D'Souza, MD and CEO, Mr. L. Krishnakumar, Executive Director and Group CFO and Mr. Ajit Krishnakumar, COO. Uh, as we usually do, we will spend about 15-20 minutes walking you through some of the key highlights of the quarter and the year and then we will open the floor for Q&A. Um, with that, it's over to you, Sunil. Yeah, thanks, Nidhi. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so uh, in summary, we had a strong fourth quarter. Uh, revenue growth of 14%, EBITDA margin of 14.3%. Uh, the good news was during the quarter, we had growth in the India beverages business, specifically volumes coming back to growth up 3%. Uh, India food business, despite all the price increases that we have taken, uh, volume was on a strong trajectory. Salt mar business margin now with the price increases normalizing is back to the normative range. International business, we had taken pricing actions. Not all of this has flowed through, but even what has flown through, we saw 11% revenue growth, 1% excluding acquisitions, and EBITDA more or less in line with last year. So even on a bottom line front, the international business has started to stabilize. Uh, if I take the full year, revenue up 11, uh, India business growth of 10, uh, India business beverages grew 1%, negative 1% volume growth because we had stress during the earlier quarters. Food business volume growth of 2, uh, value of 26 with the price increases. International business X acquisitions was up 4% in constant currency, primarily driven by price increases. We continue to drive the India growth business. They grew 53%, accounted for 15%. Uh, starting from 6 when we took over, they're now up to 15%, so we're growing beyond tea and salt. During the year, we gained market share in salt, but tea volumes saw marginal dip. We had for the full, for MAT March 23, we had a 50 bips dip in volume share. Uh, on profitability, India business EBITDA margins expanded by 90 bips during the year despite inflation in salt. Uh, and please remember that the volume growth that happened in the India beverages business start to reflect in market share in the quarters going ahead. We continue to accelerate innovation where we started from 0.8, we are now at 3.4 for FY23. Uh, we are in the top quartile, but we will continue to move this up. Uh, free cash flow uh, conversion from EBITDA was close to 99% and our dividend is up by 40% year on year. Uh, in terms of performance, India beverages, as I mentioned, volume growth of 3, revenue 8, India foods, volume 8, uh, revenue 26, uh, US coffee volume was negative 20, uh, just to highlight that the way we took pricing in the US was by pack price and degramming rather than taking naked pricing, so it shows on volume but overall revenue was up 6. Uh, international X acquisitions, volume growth uh, 3 and revenue growth X acquisitions of 6. Uh, Tata Coffee, obviously you've seen the results, 14 volume and 16 revenue. Overall consolidated constant currency growth of 12, reported 14. Uh, in group performance, we delivered revenue 3,619 crores uh, at 12% uh, constant currency uh, growth. 
518 crores of EBITDA, which was up 13. Uh, group net profit was up by 21 at 290 crores, and we have roughly 3,000 crores of cash. Uh, margins expanded and EPS was for the full year was up by 28%. In terms of our strategic priorities, number one was uh, we, we had made a statement in September of 2020 saying that in one year we'll grow double our direct distribution and in three years we'll double our numeric reach. Uh, so the target was to hit 4 million uh, outlets by September of 23. We are at 3.8 as of March, so well on track to achieve that. And in terms of direct reach, we've expanded three times from where we started in FY20. Uh, going forward, you'll see two important things which will continue to accelerate this. A is all 10 lakh plus towns. We are splitting our uh, sales uh, uh, front end to provide focus on food and beverage. And going down to appoint direct distributors in all 50,000 plus towns and significant amount of 20,000 plus to drive distribution and plug our share gaps in semi-urban and rural. Uh, alternate channels, good story, uh, overall a contribution from modern trade is now 14 and e-commerce 9. Uh, modern trade grew 21, e-commerce grew 32. The beauty about e-commerce, it allows us to pilot all our innovation and figure out what's working, what's not. And obviously it's working because NPD contribution, while overall I showed you a 3.4%, uh, e-commerce is 10%. So it's a question of distributing that innovation. Uh, and making it available to a wider audience. Uh, key, our hyperlocal drive continues. Uh, market share, as I mentioned, in volume terms, we were down 50 bits, value we were down 113. Uh, but we do expect, given the focus on execution, given the fact that our geographies of the north, where we are higher weighted, and a rural seeming to stabilize a bit, we do expect to make this and more than make up for it as we go forward. Uh, salt, the story has been expanding beyond the base data salt, and here you'll see very clearly the amount of launches that have happened in the value added spaces, whether it is iron, zinc, uh, light, super light, focus on rock salt. Uh, and value-added salts from less than 1% in FY20 are now up to 5%, significantly higher price indices. And overall, our salt share has gone up by 76 bips on a MAT basis. Uh, innovation, I talked about. We started at a point eight. We're now up to 3.4. We have roughly doubled our launches compared to last year. And it's not only foods and beverages. It is new categories, including expanding Himalayan and entering the protein space. A digital has been a huge, huge uh, move for us. We are completely on clouds, no servers. We run a single instance of SAP. Our entire front end is now digitized, uh, and we are looking at taking it one step further now. Our entire supply chain runs on blue yonder IBP systems, and we've got dashboarding across functions, across businesses. The key is now to leverage this these pipelines that we have laid and the data that we gather to move into the next phase of data-driven NPD, things like web crawling, social listening to drive NPD, uh, leveraging AI ML to drive procurement, take revenue growth management to the next level by running analytics much more rigorously, and sharpen our spends on marketing with very, very clear data-driven ROI spends. Uh, we had announced our uh, global simplification, which was two parts, which was reducing the number of international entities as well as delisting and merging Tata Copy. Uh, we have made significant progress on that, and we expect somewhere in Q2 to be able to complete the NCLT process and thereby then start the process of uh, collapsing the international entities. Apart from that, we've consolidated our ownership in JVs in Bangladesh. We've uh, terminated our JV and we are setting up on our own out there in South Africa. We upped our stake to take majority control and the founders will still continue with us to continue to drive the business there. 
new engines of growth moving beyond tea and salt focus on sampan ready to drink soulful and uh, the ready to eat ready to cook portfolio uh, it's up to now 15% of our uh, revenue in the india business and strong growth continues uh, combined revenue growth was 53% for fy23 uh we have made significant progress on the acquisitions that we have made soulful we acquired in fy end of fy20 it was 180 crores it is upwards of 600 crores right now very very high innovation to sales as we expand our portfolio and we expanded our footprint and capacity significantly uh distribution up 70% year on year soulful doubled in revenue last year uh the rupees 10 pack was instrumental in reaching 3000 outlets uh, masala oats has been uh, tracking ahead and we gained significant market share in places that we've already distributed this uh alti alti is slightly behind on our timelines but now the international expansion which is key on this business uh, has kicked off uh starbucks scaling rapidly 10th year we are now we crossed the 1000 crore mark uh, we added 71 stores which is a record for uh, starbucks we are now in 41 cities and uh, 333 stores now nationally uh, you will see an aggressive uh, expansion uh, even going forward uh, more than that we have also run this pilot uh, which we called moonshot to uh and fine tuned four options uh, to drive extra traffic into the outlets a enhanced uh, beverage offerings including milk shakes filter coffee and uh, masala chai uh, new pico size both for affordability as well as uh, ease of consumption for the indian consumer uh, number 3 is uh, revamped our food to offer shareable and fresh options and refurbished interiors to make them less intimidating more brighter and more inviting for indian consumers especially as we roll out to tier 2 tier 3 cities we have uh, put out our sustainability goals uh, out there and on track or uh, executing against the commitments that we have made in terms of the macro environment overall uh, we are now seeing a slight downtrend on uh, tea prices uh, but keeping fingers crossed because there is lot uh, in the macro environment which can swing this coffee had started coming down but is now stable to slightly upwards bias as we go forward in terms of the businesses per se India package beverages three uh, percent volume, one percent revenue. Overall value one one three bips down. Volume was down fifty. Uh, we do think that given the stress seeming to slightly reduce on the rural and especially the northern uh, parts of the country, we will start seeing volume growth and market share coming back quickly. uh i already talked about salt volume growth of 8 and revenue growth of 26 market share was 76 uh value added portfolio is now 5% of our mix tata sampan continue to grow strongly growing 35% for the quarter with the full year growth being 29 margins are almost back to normal soulful doubled uh, during the year Narishko 80% revenue growth uh, and Tata Copper is 2.2 times of uh, uh, its size. One. Tata Coffee overall growth 11% in plantations, 20% in extraction. A large part of this driven by coffee prices, but also enhanced number of customers and uh, NPD. Starbucks. I talked about international. Uh, the good news is uh, we've taken pricing across markets, uh, and uh, between pricing and cost restructuring, overall international EBIT margin is now coming back to its normalised stage. We're just about 100 bips off from where we were on international business versus the same quarter last year. Uh, more or less maintaining our market share. 
in UK, US as well as Canada. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> thanks Sunil and uh, morning everyone. Uh, we've had a good quarter as Sunil mentioned. Uh, we'll first talk about the standalone performance and as you see here, we have a revenue growth of about 12% and more than proportionate EBITDA growth in excess of 20%. So strong performance by the tea business where we had volume growth of 3% as Sunil mentioned uh, and trend of improving margins compared to where we were in the previous uh, couple of quarters or so. I think same holds good overall for the foods business as you will see. So strong margin growth, strong top line growth uh, driven both by volume and price. Moving on to the consolidated results and the numbers are with you where we have 14% uh, top line growth, 12% in underlying terms. Uh, roughly out of that half and half is volume and price. So it's a quarter where we've had uh, volume growth coming back in different parts of the business uh, in different degrees. And within that overall the growth portfolio uh, of Swampan, uh, Water and Soulful doing exceedingly well. In terms of profitability, uh, you, we have sort of come back in this quarter to the kind of EBIT, EBITDA margin levels that we had in the same period last year, more or less there. Uh, but the point to be noted was that in the earlier quarters, international uh, was lower than in the previous year. Whereas the absolute profitability in this quarter of the international business is more or less in line with the previous year. So we've arrested the decline. It's sort of stable, driven by price increases that we have taken. And in addition to various cost restructuring efforts, which are ongoing, you will see more of that as you go into the next year. Moving on to the next slide, uh, this is just a recap of financials and what we said uh, in terms of EBITDA, we are seeing that we are more or less coming back to where we were on track in EBIT and EBITDA. Exceptional items in this quarter include a small element of uh, acquisition of stake in our Bangladesh JV. So we had to account an accounting gain. There are restructuring costs. Uh, no major movement on the tax line. If you look at the share of profits uh, from JVs and associates, not called out here, but it's in the statutory, you will find that it is slightly, the loss is slightly higher than the same period in the previous year. Uh, we had a slightly higher loss in uh, the North India plantations where we don't have crop in this quarter uh, and Starbucks did well. Moving on to the right hand side for the full year, you're seeing 11% top line growth. Uh, the EBIT or EBITDA growth is lower than what you see in the quarter. So the quarter you're seeing overall the ratios being much better than the full year performance and that we see is a, to be an improving trend. Uh, in terms of share of profit from JVs and associates for the full year, you'll see that the loss is reduced because of increased performance of Starbucks. So if you move on to the next slide, uh, this is a standalone performance and again here I'll call out uh, what I've already said that the EBITDA growth is uh, more than proportionate to the top line growth in the quarter and also for the full year we've seen strong growth in terms of performance relative to top line. Uh, so the underlying foods business doing very well, salt in particular driven by uh, premiumization, we've had variants like Tata Salt Light, Tata Salt Immuno, Rock Salt also doing very well in addition to the base salts. And as, as I mentioned, the growth businesses uh, have also done well. Uh, so moving on to the next slide in terms of segment performance, uh, you'll see here that in India business, uh, we have a, an improvement in segment results more than proportionate to the top line. Uh, in terms of international business, it is flat to marginally lower, uh, but if you look at the absolute numbers, 127, 128, it's flattish. And if you see the previous quarters, you'd have seen that it was lower. That's the point I made earlier. Uh, branded business did well in the quarter, driven by improved coffee prices, uh, and that is sustaining going into the next year. So overall, in terms of proportion, India revenue 70%, uh, and uh, 77% in terms of uh, EBIT compared to 70% in terms of profits. So the proportion of India and the profitability of India uh, continues to be better and, and that's the trajectory you will see more of going into the future. So uh, with that we'll uh, hand you back to the moderator for uh, to Sunil for any concluding remarks before we open up for questions. Yeah, so if I, if I look at FY23 in a nutshell, A, 
is we have seen huge amount of volatility geopolitical commodity currency crude uh, and stress across different parts of our businesses uh, but now we seem to be seeing green shoots especially in our salient markets for tea in india and remain cautiously optimistic i wouldn't say that we are out of the woods as of yet but we have started seeing volume growth coming back uh, impact of inflation and monetary tightening on economic growth and demand seems to be slowing down in terms of the upward trajectory but i would keep my fingers crossed and monitor it closely uh if i summarize fy23 we delivered a double digit top line while balancing margins in an extremely volatile and inflationary environment the business in india was subdued due to demand challenges in our key markets but we do think we put various interventions in place volume growth has started to come back and we hope to continue this in spite of the price increases that we took on salt we continue to gain market share led by strong execution margin is now mostly back to its normative range growth businesses have been on a strong trajectory uh, whether it is uh, narishko ready to drink or it is soulful or tata sampan everything has delivered as per expectations uh, tata starbucks is on a strong wicket and the game now is to accelerate store openings till further in the international business huge amount of work done to combat inflation and adverse currency movements with pricing and various other structural interventions which have been put into place and like lk said not all of this you've seen it flow through we do expect in the next two quarters you will start seeing more of this flowing through into the pnl given the uh, significant input cost inflation increasing salience of the new businesses we have minimize the consolidated ebitda margin and we will continue to focus on driving profitable growth there is one more point that i would want to make up front is uh, we have changed our reporting uh, disclosures and we have uh, gone to a statutory reporting of advertising and sales promotion you will see the numbers coming out in the uh, annual report going forward while we will continue to report the statutory numbers uh, as is uh, any extra information we are more than willing to provide uh, and just one or two extra points i would like to make on that is not all the improvement in the india ebitda has come out of uh, ant squeeze number one number two is please remember when you say advertising and sales promotion we still not counting the discounts trade promotions etc which happen to be captured in net sales so there is a whole bunch of price consumer trade advertising etc which contributes to growth of the businesses and uh, yeah so any any extra information more than happy to provide maybe we'll give it to you thank you sunil uh, back to you moderator thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use hands up while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is on the line of Vivek M from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Sunil and team. Uh, Sunil, starting from where uh, you left, so can you just give a help us with advertising spends for uh, at console as well as at standalone levels? Uh, so Vivek, overall for the year, uh, on a standalone basis as well as consolidated, we have increased in absolute terms. uh versus last year for the quarter it has been a bit lower than what it was last year but you have to remember it's also planned around all our promotions activities and as we we seen growth slowing down in certain geographies we have taken more action on pricing uh, on salt we've taken aggressive price increases we've given back some to trade to make sure we oil the channels to drive volumes uh so yeah while it has been a slightly lower uh but the intent is obviously to keep fueling our brands as we go forward 
quarter to quarter you will see movements going up and down but overall the intent is not that we will cut advertising and drive bottom line that's number one number two when you look at the stand alone it doesn't still portray the picture of our india business in totality because uh, uh, things like soulful and narishko are outside that uh, if i if i remember the numbers right there has been a upwards of 50% increase in the soulful and narishko businesses uh, on ant for the quarter itself got it got it and so is it still possible so i understand you have moved to what is uh, what is the you know let's say bare minimum requirement but in your press release can you put advertising number because neither it is you know let's say competitive uh, info which you can't share nor it is you know something that we can ignore so it will be very useful if you can continue with that you know i think nidhi and company will make it available to you on an ongoing basis in the quarter we'll see if we can add it to the investor presentation but otherwise nidhi will share the numbers with you okay got it uh thank you for that the second question sunil is on international margin so uh, there's a smart recovery uh, in margins where do you think it settles uh, you know in the next few quarters do you think we go back to the you go back to the historical levels uh, so so vivek the i intend absolutely is not only to go back to historicals but improve from there on as we always maintained uh, net ebit margins of the international business have always been accretive Uh, in my mind to the indian portfolio uh, right now with the pricing and the cost takeouts that we have done uh, pricing for example in the uk we took pricing only a 15% price increase only in feb so you're not seeing the whole impact flow through or there are structural cost actions uh, which are still uh, work in process and should be completed by end of this month so i think between quarter 1 and quarter 2 you would see everything coming in but i would expect international margins to come back solidly if not better than where they were uh, before we started off thank you the next question is from the line of percy pantaki from iifl please go ahead uh hi sunil uh, and nidhi uh, and uh, lkk sir uh, uh, good afternoon uh, my uh, first question is on the tea business so uh, just wanted to understand from you sunil uh, uh, since you took over let's say over the last 3 4 years uh, has there been a more broad basing of the t revenues in terms of the state contribution i understand that you have certain states where you are very strong certain states where your market shares are very low uh, uh, so just wanted to understand the latter where the states where uh, uh, you are low market share Uh, what are the strategies there and have they borne any fruit and are you seeing sort of uh, apart from the core uh, states of the northern territories where of course there is a macro issue and that's why you are not growing but apart from that have we seen uh, uh, sort of some amount of uh, improvement in uh, states where we are weak and do we like have a specific state wise strategy as to how to grow market share in different states uh, where we are underrepresented Uh, so firstly very specifically yes uh, we do have a cluster wise strategy uh, for implementation uh, uh, by cluster uh, the brands are different the pricing uh, moves are different and the ant spends are different uh, so very specifically for example we are weaker in the south uh, stronger in the north uh, again in the north if you peel it off i mean Uh, while we are strong in most parts of the north eastern up is a weakness so we need to uh, make up in eastern up for example there are very specific distribution pricing advertising product uh, moves put in play uh, in the in our weaker markets we have made traction and you would have seen that resulting in our market share still till about two quarters back i mean we were on upward trajectory on market shares unfortunately this is a mathematical exercise where a semi urban and rural is where we uh, we have issues our portfolio was stronger in the mass to the value segments which came under pressure and that came specifically in the geographic geographies of, of the north where we are stronger so a host of uh, different permutation combinations because of which we've seen a slip in market share but that slip in market share is a reality so going forward there are two three very very specific actions that we are uh, taking and this is not only to boost 
the volume and share, but this is to boost the overall portfolio. Like I said, what, when we had started three years back to drive efficiency, we had created one common distribution system, which was selling both tea and uh, foods. And you saw the synergies coming through and the top lines being driven as a result of that. But now as we go forward, we are realizing that now this is also becoming a bottleneck for our growth because it's the same salesman now selling a far, far wider portfolio and there is a, for want of a better word, I'll say data overflow on that end. So we are now splitting the routes in all 10 lakh plus towns, which is where we have scale both for food and beverage to carry two separate salesmen. Apart from that, uh, as I mentioned, our weakness in market share was primarily in semi-urban and rural. And to that extent, in the first round, we had focused on building distribution in urban areas and in the semi-urban rural, we had relied on sub-distributors. But as we build scale, we have figured out now we can support distributors in all 50,000 plus towns and quite a significant number of 20,000 plus towns. Now, the good news is all the 20,000 plus towns where we think we can uh, support scale are all in our weaker but higher pricing for tea geographies, if you get what I mean. And therefore, we are going off on a significant expansion in quarter one and definitely by middle of quarter two we'll finish that, which will put us in good stead as we go forward. Fundamentally on the brand spaces, we don't think there is anything wrong. Uh, all brand metrics are strong, uh, distribution remains healthy, and we just need to put our heads down and execute against our strategies. And we do think that we'll not only, as I mentioned earlier, we'll not only come back on share, but we expect to grow from here. Right. And uh, the direct distribution, which uh, you have uh, tripled uh, over the last uh, year or two, uh, is there uh, further scope for that to increase? And if so, can you share over the next two to three years, this 1.2 uh, million outlets, how much uh, do you see it going up to? So it's 1.5 million outlets as of now, Parthi. Uh, and uh, as I said, as we move uh, to 50,000 plus towns and 20,000 plus towns, we do expect uh, to increase this direct distribution. But we also expect to move our numeric reach, which we, we are now in the short term targeting to 4 million. Uh, we do expect uh, to uh, inch that still further. We are in the process of putting the numbers together and we will uh, make a statement on where we expect to land. Right, sir. Next question on uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, there is some, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 20% uh, uh, volume decline uh, in this business. How is this possible? Like in an FMCG category, 20% volume decline. I mean, uh, can you give some idea on what is happening here? So, so Percy, overall, if you look at it, uh, whether it is in tea or coffee, across all the markets, there has been a volume decline. That's number one. Number two might be slightly more pronounced for eight o'clock because uh, instead of taking naked pricing, we have done a packed price. So for the same price, you're getting a lower volume. Uh, but the good news is, despite that, we've shown a revenue increase and margins are back to normal. But Sunil, wouldn't this uh, clearly uh, be a sort of a dip in uh, market shares? Uh, because I'm sure the overall consumption of uh, coffee would not have reduced that much. I think, I think uh, there, there is no significant drop in, in market share. There is the other element that you need to remember on a quarter to quarter or even on a year to year basis is to do with uh, facing of promotions, right? In a particular quarter, if Walmart decides to run a pro promotion, volumes will be higher by 10%. Next quarter, if it happens in the subsequent quarter, then quarter and quarter will be a drop. So there are, it is not a, a linear growth on a quarter to quarter. In the developed markets, not only for coffee, because the timing of promotions also can impact quarter to quarter. No, and and Percy, just to answer your question, we have more or less maintained market share, both in bags and K-cups uh, in 8 o'clock coffee in the US. Okay, sir. And lastly, just one request. Uh, now we have crossed a thousand crores on Starbucks, and now we are like a significant uh, player in the overall QSR space. So, if you can increase disclosures on this business in terms of some things like uh, SSSG 
or uh, pre indices uh, ebitda margins uh, on a quarterly basis uh, i mean just a couple of data points of these sorts not an entire pnl or anything of that sort that will really help us uh, sort of analyze uh, this business because it is becoming of some material size now so perci we, we don't think we are significant yet i think we've got a long way to become much more significant and we will try and get back to you with more data sure sir thank you thank you next question is on the line of vivek m from jeffries please go ahead hello vivek your line went off queue you may proceed with the follow up uh, sorry you're not audible vivek uh, can you request you to come closer to the mic on this very transaction so uh, vivek you're still not audible please use the handset mode You have, you have, you have the I think there's some uh, connection from the line of Vivek. Uh, we will move to the next question, and that is from the line of Mihir Shah from Nomura. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so I had a quick question on the normative range of uh, salt margins, which you mentioned has come back to normative range. Uh, can you share what that range would be? Because in the past couple of years. they have been uh, you know you are in quite a bit uh, what is a normative range that one should consider for salt margins uh i i would just leave it as we are between the 32 to 37 gross margin uh, as we calculate internally and uh, we are more or less in the, that range right now so on a bit a bit margin if you can give us some sense uh, you know historically we had shared a bit margin so uh from an ebit margin perspective i was asking from that point no so so here's the thing we have a common infrastructure now for the india business for the entire portfolio and therefore we moved out from a uh, ebit margin by category uh we look at margin after uh, advertising and promotion expenses by category and then a common infrastructure set of costs we can do various permutation combinations and allocations uh but we have moved out from that right now understood uh so second question i wanted to check on the your uh outlook for tea prices and the sustainability of this turnaround in tea volumes that we have witnessed uh given that the you know plucking season will again start in some time and historically also we've seen tea prices again moderating down in the coming uh, in 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 the in the quarter 1 2 etc um can that trigger another round of price cuts uh, and how will the volumes for tea shape up in, in that context sir uh, so so let me let me answer the volume question first right uh, the volume question i don't think is related to your tea prices and tea costs as much as with the inflation and rural stress which is the demand side of the equation uh as i said right now we are seeing uh, early green shoots and therefore we are seeing volumes come up on tea and we do expect barring any unforeseen uh things happening in the macro environment we do expect volumes to continue that's number one number two when tea prices go up or down depending on uh, the crop we would move pricing up and down uh and therefore in absolute terms of percentages we would try to maintain the margins per se uh going uh, if, if you dial back what happened in fy23 is i would say two salient factors a is effects of the floods in june july and the droughts in october november which impacted uh the tea crop and therefore price the second piece is sri lanka going out of the equation and russia entering the market uh draw up prices now the the thing is right now i think the market is leveled at all these pluses minuses we do expect a slightly downward trend on tea pricing as we go forward uh but like i said i mean we would keep a close eye on it and move up and down on our uh product prices uh to make sure that we balancing volumes and margin fantastic so my last question is on salts business uh you know there is a likelihood that the sharp price increases that we have taken in the past couple of quarters they start adversarizing from the first quarter onwards and you know that growth will continue the pricing led leg of the growth will uh, you know fade away 
uh, now volumes have picked up this quarter uh, you know for source given the prices now will be stabilized can one expect a similar uh, range of uh, volume growth for salts to continue um, uh, uh, in the near term sir it's not only for salt i think we have very clearly said uh, in the medium to longer term we do expect both tea and salt businesses to grow mid single digits in volumes so i don't think anything changes from that yes this year we've had uh, significant revenue growth on account of the pricing that you've taken which will not uh, be uh, tenable going forward but the volume growth is what we remain focused on got it thank you very much sir all the very best thank you next question is from the line of sumanth kumar from motilal oswal please go ahead yeah uh, can you talk about the narisco uh, state coverage and going forward how many state we are going to uh, expand and also the channel expansion going forward so narisco when we started off uh, 3 years back we were primarily in orissa andhra telangana and a small part, part of tamil nadu <clears throat> we spent most of fy 21 stabilizing the business and in fy 22 moving to the east fy 22 and fy 23 the focus has been to move to the north and a little bit of west i would say broadly we are at least present in 75 uh, to 80% of the country present doesn't mean we've got real strength there uh, but the game is now to expand distribution add manufacturing locations uh, and grow in the places which we've already entered uh, 180 to 600 crores in 3 years uh, we would be targeting to be close to a four digit number in fy24 okay and with channel expansion of from say 600 6 lakh uh, 6 lakh uh, outlet to how much uh we would have an aggressive uh, number for that to make sure uh, the volume growth uh, continues okay can you talk about this uh, losses from share of jv and associate has increased uh, 56 crore what was the key reason for that that is only for this quarter but if you take the full year you will see an improvement on the bottom line uh, i would again urge you given the fact that basically when you say jv and associates it's primarily three factors driving the uh, numbers one is uh, kdhp appl and starbucks and uh, there are different uh, uh, seasonalities for the businesses per se starbucks there has been a significant improvement appl it has been a decent improvement kdhp has more or less been uh, uh, performing to expectations for the full year so i would urge you to look at it from a full year perspective where you are seeing an improvement on the line Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Arnab Mitra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. Uh, my first question was on the uh, growth businesses, which is now 15% of India business. Uh, so normally, when you know these businesses uh, start becoming bigger um, uh, at the initial stage, the margin profile is much lower. than the the you know well established businesses so is that true in your case overall if you look at this bucket of 15% and uh, as you expand uh, unlike other categories do you need to up anp significantly or this is more of a distribution led growth uh, even at this stage uh, so so uh, let me make two three points yeah number one in terms of contributory margins uh soulful is accretive significantly accretive narisco is about par and sampan obviously given the profile is slightly below our uh, total numbers but then the growth opportunities for all these three businesses are on three different vectors sampan obviously is a huge runway narisco is a significant uh, number that we can play with and then there is uh, soulful now as we grow these businesses we are very very mindful that contributory and overall gross margins have to be in the normative ranges there will be spends on anp as we build our businesses and the growth will come out of both primarily first distribution and backed by anp and brand building apart from that portfolio expansion is an important play so while soulful we started off with only breakfast cereals then we moved into uh, uh, masala oats which again has performed very well 
and now i would say in the coming year again you will see two three significant innovations same thing in narishko uh, geographic expansion has played a significant part but more than that now you will also start seeing innovation getting ramped up narishko innovation as a percentage of sales is already 13% versus our overall company norm of uh, 3.4 which i talked about uh, that also you will find it uh, uh, ramping up understood and uh, uh, sunil uh, the 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 uh, question on you know when you have such high npd uh, or let's say growth in new businesses not really npd but growth businesses uh, how are you taking care of you know the uh, risk of potential take backs excess inventory getting sold in and uh, you know those kind of things in any sense on that because the initial distribution led growth of course comes but then uh, uh, these are food categories where uh, expiry dates and those kind of things come into play Uh, so so the good and bad part is now we've got a totally digitized uh, sales system right right from ssa dms etc so we have full view on what is the secondary sales what is the inventory being carried in modern trade we've got access to what is the inventory in each and every store uh, we are very very mindful that uh, secondaries and primaries have to match and we are not driving numbers just by ramping up Yes, in a few categories we do have learning. For example, when we took took over Solpol uh, two years back, uh, my guys were used to selling only tea and salt. They were not used to the fragile packaging of Solpol and or the different expiry dates and or the fact that it was selling more in different types of outlets. So that once that learning phase was passed, I mean that is why now Solpol is on our roll, right? So we will have these small learning phases as we go forward. but i don't think we are we will have a car crash simply because uh, a the data driven b is primary and secondary uh, driven and c th- these reviews are done on a periodic basis to make sure that we don't land up into issues we would rather start slow small and then expand for example dry fruits we launched only online to test out the strength of the product and as we found it now we are going to look at the offline spaces okay okay thanks so much that's it from my side all the best thank you next question is from the line of sheila rathi from morgan stanley please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my questions uh, i have two questions sunil uh, the first one is uh, is it fair to believe that uh, all the headwinds around inflation or even supply chain across our portfolio across geographies are now behind us you know shila i i wish i could answer that question uh, but given what we have seen in the last one year i i wouldn't uh, try to hazard a guess all that i would say is in the near term we see a sort of stable operating environment uh whether it is currency whether it is crude whether it is commodity in terms of tea uh, or salt uh so i would take it one quarter at a time uh and i think given the last one year the one thing that we have learned is to be agile move around uh, a different levers uh, focus on different pieces to make sure we're delivering numbers i i would just say in the near term we are seeing stability we are seeing inflation sort of uh, the slope starting to more plateau uh, we are starting to see demand slowly starting to come back especially in india in places where there is stress internationally currencies etc we are seeing starting to move in a bank uh, but like i said we would take it one quarter at a time fair enough uh and my second question was specific to sampan portfolio uh just you know sunil if you could step back before, uh, you know pre covid uh we had a strategy in place we wanted to scale this business uh just when we you know look at what is happening currently uh, would it would it be again fair to say that uh, the competitive intensity in this space has gone up significantly and are we you know re-strategizing in terms of how we want to scale this business so uh, sheila so number one is i don't think the ambition has changed pre covid and now sampan we had always said that we will target a 30% growth can we target much more yes we can but to drive a profitable trajectory for sampan is balancing between your top line and your margins 
margins also we had said that they will be uh, moving into double digits now we are starting to move the trajectory sampan margins also have started to move while this quarter we have delivered a 35% top line right competitive intensity i don't think is going away given the sheer size of the categories that sampan is going to play in a b the fact that all these categories have huge unbranded plays and therefore there is an opportunity to brand them i think uh, i mean i mean everyone will look at or different players will look at it in from a very similar lens uh, i think we are quite happy with the trajectory in fact if 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 i could maintain or slightly move up the margin levers i would go for higher volume growth but yeah i mean that is a if i could uh, but i do think we've delivered to expectations and any call out on the distribution strategy there you know beyond uh, the online positioning no so that that's exactly what i talked about i think one of the things which we observed is uh when when we set up the entire snd system for tata consumer way back in august september of 2020 we had common salesmen who would sell tea and salt and then sampan and then soulful and then tata smart foods uh but as we've gone forward and all these different businesses have scaled portfolio has expanded sku's have increased we figured out that the salesman is becoming the bottleneck and therefore we're splitting the routes in all 10 lakh plus towns uh to uh, it will be uh, beverages plus soulful and salt plus sampan plus uh, smart foods uh so we will have more focus on sampan and i do think that itself is going to have a significant impact because uh the one thing we are confident about sampan as a product quality brand everything is a uh, all green ticks which is what you see uh, on online because in some of the online portals we are the market leaders in the category that we operate it's a question of putting it into stores and getting it to consumers hands which is what my offline distribution should do by providing this extra focus and making sure we distribute we are quite confident that we can accelerate the growth understood thank you thank you next question is from abhishek singhal from naredi investments please go ahead good afternoon sir thanks for taking my question first question is that does the turnover has also come in four digit and habit margin is positive for fy 23 but net profit is in loss and what is the amount of loss and when will this business come in profit company sir starbucks so starbucks according to india's reporting we are ebitda positive and ebit positive and uh, statutory reporting according to that the net pat uh, is negative so we are in line with our reporting requirements but the business is on a very very strong foot no, i think the, the only appreciation here is that uh, because we are rapidly expanding store and you have the interest and appreciation impact and it is you know in a loose sense on a wdb basis with the high cost in the initial year so that's what's happening in the interest and uh, you know depreciation front so underlying stores are all uh, very profitable there is no issue and we clarified that whether it's in days whether it's management accounts i think uh, we are here on a strong footing sir uh, tell me what is the amount of the loss sir if you can share you wait for the statute read right and you'll get the result yeah okay okay thanks thanks sir second question what are the expectation of habit margin in international business and in what range will it be in fy24 the habit margin for international business as i mentioned has recovered significantly and we are just 100 bips below uh, what we delivered there in the same quarter last year going forward international business will be accretive to the uh, total company uh, habit margins by at least 100 to 150 bips okay thank you so much Moderator, we'll now go to the webcast and take a few questions from there. Uh, there is a question from uh, uh, Chanchal Sunil. He is asking, "What is our beverage strategy for Tata Copper, Tata Gluco Plus, and Himalayan, and what is the structure of the business?" Not sure I understand the question, but just as a perspective, Narishko, we we have two different distribution systems. One is the value, and one is the premium end. 
The premium end handles the Himalayan part of the portfolio, which is very specifically targeted to high-end uh, on-premise accounts. Uh, the value portion is primarily the Tata Copper and Glucoplast. Uh, so the idea there is to expand our both manufacturing and distribution footprint. Uh, as we've expanded, we figured out we have uh, consumers have resonated with the products. And that is why last year we've expanded our footprint by roughly 2x. And that will be the trend as we go forward for some time. Uh, yeah, thanks, Neil. The next question is from Abhi. She's asking what is the expectation on India tea prices in FY24 as there is there are reports of severe weather conditions and uh, unseasonal rain. And is there now confidence that Masala O Plus is now successful? So let me answer the second question first. So let, Abhi, let me say we have started to move into the higher double digit market shares in specific modern trade accounts where we have placed uh, masala oats so we don't have a doubt that it is successful it's a question of how fast can we expand distribution and get consumer trials that's that's number one number two as i said this year we had floods in assam in june july and then we had drought in november so i wouldn't have had a guess on uh, what would happen to tea crop and prices uh, all that I would say is right now our margins are more or less operating in the normative range. As crop goes up or down and prices go up or down, we will keep moving our prices to make sure that A, we are competitive, B, we are delivering margin, and C, we are continuing to drive volume growth and market share. Okay, thanks, Mil. Uh There is a question from Rohit at Vito. He's asking, what is the progress on geographical footprint expansion of Narishko business? Are Narishko sales still highly concentrated in a few states? How many states do you have manufacturing presence now for Narishko? I think you've already partly addressed this question. We're about 75-80% of the country. We expanded manufacturing footprint by 2 to 2.5x last year. And that will be the rate at which we will continue for some time. Even if it is not footprint in the same plants, also we are adding additional lines. Uh, we will be expanding our portfolio as well aggressively, and you'll see that play out. Yeah. And uh, there's a question from Pages at Avendis. He's asking in this segment, how have we done on value market share and volume market share? I think we've already provided this data, Pages, in the investor deck. And then he's asking, have we lost market share to big national players or to regional players as well? So, uh, uh, just primarily, I think it is about 50 bips on a MAT basis, March 23 on volume, and about 113 bips on value. Uh, that is the negative. Uh, while major competitor has more or less maintained value share for the full year, it is primarily uh, we've lost share to regional players. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mil. I think that's it from the webcast. Uh, I know we are out of time, but there might be more questions uh, on the other QNAQ, so perhaps we'll extend the call by another 10 minutes. So, moderator, you can go back to the QNAQ. Thank you. The next question is from Amit Purohit from Madara. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So, uh, just you highlighted that uh, India business would also look some margin improvement. So, uh, just wanted to understand what would be the drivers of uh, this margin improvement, whether it will be driven by uh, the foods, which is largely the salt business, or uh, the beverages also you feel margin improvement. So, I'm not sure when you talk about margin improvement, I presume you talk of EBIT margins. EBIT margins would be driven primarily by volume growth while keeping costs under tight control. Right? As we mentioned, gross margins on both tea and salt are broadly in the normative range. So the game is to increase volume uh, growth, A and B, make sure that we have tight control on cost. India business, the same quarter last year, has improved by 100 bips on EBIT, uh, and we do expect uh, improving momentum from here on. Okay, and uh, you don't think so that it would be driven by uh, maybe salt kind of uh, uh, margin improvement if the RM index goes down, is that? 
Because uh, RM index going down, I don't think is a straight correlation to margin. Because remember, we are operating in a competitive environment. Whether it is tea or salt, if RM goes down and we do see prices going down in the market, we would re react. Why? Like I said, it's a balance between volume, market share, and margin. Uh, you cannot take margins beyond a point in uh, certain commodities. Very, very mindful of that. Uh, as I said, the game has to be driven by volume and therefore flow through into the bottom line. Sure. And lastly, tax rate uh, guidance uh, for FY24. We, we, we don't guide for tax rates, right? We are compliant and pay all our taxes. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Santhil Manikandan from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So just one question on the tea business. So in the last call, you mentioned that uh, 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 in terms of uh, taking some progress on closing the distribution cap with the competitor. So you mentioned like 10 to 12 percent the companies begin. So how far you have come and uh, you can quantify like uh, uh, how, you, how many quarters will it take to bridge the distribution cap? I can't give you how many quarters on bridging the distribution gap because competitor also moves, right? Albeit we will move at a far faster pace. All that I can do is uh, we have in T, we started at a 2 million numeric reach. We are now at a 2.9 million. But even with that, we have about a 10, I would say 10% or thereabouts uh, numeric reach gap. Uh, as I mentioned, we're putting in actions in place to bridge that gap. Two specific actions in the large cities, we are splitting the routes to give focus to beverages and food separately. And our, our distribution gaps, when you look at a Nielsen perspective, it's semi-urban and rural. We are now appointing distributors, direct distributors in all 50,000 plus towns and a significant number of 20,000 plus towns. So. Uh, we have put out for the portfolio, we have put out a target of 4 million outlets, which we will reach definitely by September. And as I mentioned earlier in the call, we are in the process of collating our next set of targets, both on direct reach and numeric, and we'll update. Okay. Uh, this is the second one on the coffee business. Uh, so with this consolidation, uh, you can give a strategy point uh, over the next two, three years, how we'll be expanding the coffee retail site. Uh, are you talking about Tata Coffee, 8 o'clock, uh, India business? India business, yes, sir. India business coffee, we are still small in the scheme of things. The game is to continue to build the brand and uh, do distribution. We've got a long way to go. We are this year, I think, A, we've expanded the distribution of the entry level 2 rupees packs. Number two is we expanded our range uh, in the higher end of coffee, including launching Tata Coffee Gold. Number three is in the north, it is more coffee. In the south, it is a coffee chicory mix. So far, we were only operating in a coffee chicory mix. Now we have started focusing on the north with a separate red pack versus the regular blue pack and uh, launched a full coffee mixture up north. Uh, yeah, it's basically, again, making sure you've got a portfolio, making sure you drive distribution and making sure you back it with brand building. I think that is the key. We're still small in the scheme of things, long way to go. Okay, thanks. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Aditya Joshi from Alchemy. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks a lot uh, for your time. Uh, Sorry, we can't tell you the question. Oh, please speak up a bit. Hello, am I audible now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for your time, sir. So my first question is with respect to the distribution strategy. Uh, sir, what percentage of total portfolio reaches to the entire 3.8 million outlets and what percentage reaches to directly to 1.5 million? And sir, uh, when will be our entire portfolio, uh, new and uh, traditional business, both uh, reach the entire uh, uh, outlet uh, that we serve right now? I don't think for any company, the total company reach, you have the entire portfolio reaching the entire numbers. Uh, 
uh, what we do target is uh, direct reach. Like I said, right now we are at 1.5 and we are in the process of drawing up our targets to move further from here A and making sure that we drive numeric reach which includes wholesalers and other these things. As I mentioned, T for example is now in 2.9 out of our total 4, uh, 4 million outlets and we will continue to move that going forward. Got it. The next question is with respect to the demand and demand Aditya, may I request demand. you to please use the handset, please? You are not clearly audible. Am I audible now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for that. So next question is with respect to the demand, demand environment in D. Uh, the presentation mentions that it has been challenges. Uh, so what is the primary reason for that? Can you... Uh, just, uh, I, I think we mentioned that multiple times. It has been uh, inflation, it has been rural stress, it has been geographies of the north. Got it, sir. And so lastly from my side, uh, uh, the presentation mentions that there will be a lot of data-driven initiatives that has been done uh, for innovation, new pipeline, new product pipeline, etc. So can you please elaborate a bit like what kind of uh, data-driven uh, initiatives we have right now? I already mentioned that during my discussion saying we will use various things like web crawling, social listening, etc. and figure our NPD from there on, right? Got it, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. That was it. Yes. Uh, moderator, we'll just take one final question. Sure. We'll be taking the last question. That is from the line of Percy Pantaki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Just a question on the other expenses. You did mention that uh, the ad spend was down for the quarter in the standalone business. But apart from ad spend, uh, the remaining part of the other expenses, uh, uh, are there any structural sort of changes uh, or savings uh, uh, which uh, we should uh, sort of expect uh, will continue, which have been visible in this quarter and will continue going ahead? So, Pati, if you just go back to, I think, I don't remember, three, four quarters back, other expenses, uh, you know, proportion to sales went up a little bit, and all all of you asked a number of questions in the in probably in the reverse to what you're asking now. And if you look at the trend, the other expenses percentage to sales has been coming down. Overall, directionally, what will happen and what we want to happen is as we increase and our spend in other expenses, a large part is relating to building the uh, what we call the pipeline in terms of base, selling and distribution, other capabilities, right, on which we will, which is increasing fixed cost. So as we bring volumes and we build scale, that proportion will come down. That is starting to happen partly because of the scale we build, partly also because of price increases that we have taken. But directionally as a proportion, we expect that to come down. So Percy, just to give you some numbers as we drive scale, what happens to expenses overall if you look at uh, people expenses as a percentage of sales in the India business, it has come down steadily, right? I, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 50 bits down versus where we uh, started off. Or other than manpower expenses, if you look at other expenses, they have come to roughly half of where we started three years back. So as long as we keep those costs tight as a percentage of sales, it will keep coming down. You might have moments between quarters as we recruit people. For example, now we, we are going to expand uh, distribution into 50,000, 20,000 uh, places. As we appoint those distributors, you will need supervisory uh, control, right? And therefore, we will recruit. Or, for example, we are working on a uh, enhanced DMS and SSFA. As we put that into place, you will have that hitting starting that quarter. So. I would urge you to look at it directionally and not on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis. Right, sir. And secondly, on Narishko, I think you mentioned, uh, but I missed out, the uh, EBITDA or EBIT margins on Narishko, uh, uh, how would they compare with uh, the remaining uh, part of the India business? So, contributory margins on Narishko are on par with the India business. Right now, as we build for ANP, there is a different profile for the Narishko business. But remember, as we gain scale, it's not ANP will not increase in line with uh, that trajectory, and therefore, we do expect Narishko to start coming uh, on a positive note uh, in this fiscal itself. Okay, and contributory margin is EBITDA plus ad spend or anything else apart from that? 
contributory margin is basically uh, product margin. Now it is all variable cost, right? Contribution of a variable cost to fixed cost. That's the way. Okay, okay, okay. So that's all for me. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Nidhi Verma for closing comments. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Anilud and team for hosting us. And thanks, everyone, for joining. If you do have any questions remaining, you can always get in touch with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICIC Securities, that concludes today's call. Thank you all for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.